Good day, student. You're welcome to JC Best School Physics class. This class is for JSS1 students. I hope you had a nice weekend and I hope what you're staying safe. So remember what we discussed last time? Last time we discussed on first, we not only define first, we what we explain what first in a unique way, right? And we also went further to differentiate between what balance first and what an unbalanced first. So our week's lesson today, we are still going to be lost looking at first. And our specific objective for this class is by the end of the lesson, you should be able to what to review the concept of first. We need to explain the types and effects of first that we have. And uh, we're going to solve a little problem using the equation of first. All right, let's start our lesson. So remember what we discussed last class? Last class, we see that first is not just the push or pull upon an object, right? It is what the push and pull upon an object resulting from what the interaction with what with another object. So today we can clip first into what into types of first and what effects of first. And types of first, we're going to be looking at what contact first and what and non-contact first. Okay? So contact first is just what it sounds like. It's on first that is in contact with what with another object or with one another. So we have different types of forces. Sorry, different types of what contact forces. So let's assume someone again softly kick the ball, which is lying stationary on the ground. So this ball is being applied by a force. So the leg that kick the ball apply the apply the force, right? So that causes what the ball to move, and at the point where the ball stop, which is also caused by what friction. So applied force is a type of uh, contact force. Frictional force is also a type of what contact force. And of course, we have air resistance because the ball stopped, right? So air resistance is also another example of what contact force. And we have what a normal force. Normal force is the force that is what acting in upward what direction. It is also what a contact force. So these are a little few examples of contact force. We're going to see more in details. So a non-contact force. Let's assume that an object is falling free, okay, on the air and it lands on the floor or the ground. So what causes this object to what to attract the air? It is caused by what the gravitational force. So what really happened that when you pull the object towards the ground, so even if there is no any physical contact with the object, the object force. So a, a gravitational force is an example of not content force. Also electric force and what and magnetic force is also another example of what of non contact force. So I'm going to be explaining it step by step. We're going to see how they work. We're going to understand how they are being applied. Okay. So just a recap of what I've just said. A contact force, we just see someone that kick the ball. So kicking the ball, you are applying what like four types of forces, right? You are you first of all first contact force is what is the applied force. Another contact force is what is the frictional force that stops the ball. Another contact force is what is the air resistance. And the first one is what is uh, the normal force. Of course, it's not just the only type of contact force we have. We're going to be seeing more of them as we go on in this class. And we also have what non-contact force. And in non-contact force, we have what an object falling freely from the ground. Maybe you threw an object from your story building, like I explained last class, the object was attract the ground. So what causes the object to fall? It is due to what the gravitational force that pull the object to the center of what of the earth. So meaning that gravitational force is a type of non-contact force. Non-contact force, you are not touching the object. The object is not coming in contact with you. It is just there, but there is a force acting on it. Okay? So we also have what electrical force and the magnetic force. So let's uh, group this force uh, in just like a bar chart. So okay, uh, okay, yeah, we, we, this slide is what we did in the last class, so I'm just going to give a little recap on it. So like I said, a contact force is an object, uh, so it's produced by what a direct physical contact with what with the object. And yeah, I have a little example of them. I have applied force, just below my cursor. I have drag force, frictional force, normal force, spring force, and tension force. So we're going to be looking at what all these what types of what contact force. And again, we have non-contact force. So non-contact force is the same thing as what as body force. So it is produced by what an object when an object is located within the first field. So a first field is also a type of what not is also called non-contact force. So you are not touching the object. The object, the force is acting on its own. An example of it is what gravitational force, electrical force, and what a magnetic force. 
All right, let's see. Let's count that first now. So I just introduced the class. So now we're going to be taking it but step by step. So try to jot things down. Try to write things in your notes, okay? And um, in contact first, like I said, if a Z is when two objects are what are in contact with what with each other. Now you see uh you see this boy is what rolling his baby on a card, so they are in contact with what with each other. So the boy is rolling his baby on a card and they definitely this card will what remove. So the first is acting here is a contact first and we also have an applied first. We can also have hair resistance, <laughs> of course, maybe if the, if the cards will stop, right? So this, uh, what's taking place here is what is the contact first. And uh, types of contact first, let's say that mommy is pushing you away to take or uh, not to take your uh, your toy. So mommy is in contact with what with you, okay? So this is also an example of what of a contact first. All right. So in apply first, this is the first example of a contact first. Either you when you kick the ball, when you softly kick the ball, it's also an applied first. Also, the, look at this man here. Is what is pushing what this cupboard. It's also what an applied first. The baby, this boy is, is pushing his baby. It's also an applied first. This boy is also kicking the ball. It's also what an applied first. So, a first applied to an object by another object or a person is called what an applied word first. And the direction of the applied first depends on what on how the first is being applied. Meaning. If the direction of the first is towards the right, the first will be applied what towards the right. It will be in the same direction. It will not oppose each other. That's what the statement is trying to say. I hope this is clear. And uh, we also have what uh, normal first. A uh, normal first, uh, like I said, is what is the upward what first is the first that supports what an object that is so like this. Year we have this table, and we have some uh, some snacks on the table. So. This is what this first is adding perpendicular to the surface of what of this of this uh, fruit here, and also the same thing as this book. So normal first is what is just like a support first. It adds what upwardly in the upward direction, like I explained in the last class. So we have air resistance. Air resistance is uh, a specifically type of frictional first, okay, that acts upon an object as they travel through what through air. So they also what oppose what the motion of the object. So they're just like a frictional first. So we have tensional first. Tensional first is the first transmitted through a string, rope or wire when it is pulled tight by first acting at the end. So we have a tire here which is attached to what to a rope. So this first is called what tensional first. And the direction is always away from what from the object. Okay, okay, the same thing as this. All right, so we have what a spring first, okay? Spring first, spiral spring, whatever you expand, like a spring, okay? So the first is acted by a compressed or stress spring upon an object which is attached to it, just like uh, in a Hooke's law. So I know you might not really know Hooke's law, but you need to do it when you get to a, a senior secondary. So whatever you compress or what, or you stretch, okay? It's just like it's just obeying the look who's slow okay so it's also a type of what of contact first because you are expanding it and you are compressing it back so you are in contact with what your hand is in contact with what with the spring so uh we have frictional first frictional first like i said is just like what the air resistance is the first that opposes what the motion of what of an object you are pushing an object forward and something is what is dragging the object backward and you are you're, you have to what, apply a, a, a higher force so as to overcome what that frictional force for the object to, what, to be able to, what, to move. Just like this man is trying to what, push the table. Of course, this table is not smooth. If it were to be smooth, it would have been easy for him to push this cupboard. So because of the, uh, the, the, the flow which the table is on, it's a rough flow. So he had to what, apply a more force that is greater than what than the frictional force for this cupboard to be able to what, to move and it always adds parallel left to what to the surface in contact and like I said it opposes the direction of what of motion so let's see non contact first so anything that is not in contact with any object is called what a non contact first so just like a 
mommy is trying to attract your toy with a magnet so mommy is not touching your your toy but she's attracting your toy with what with a magnet so it's not any contact so mommy is not touching it and you're also not touching it but when they apply the magnet so your toy get attracted towards the magnet so this uh, frost is what we call what magnetic frost so it is a non-contact frost because what it does not have any contact with what with object so the first non-contact frost we have we have what we have gravitational frost like i said an object was falling freely to the earth and it get attracted toward the center of what of the earth so the gravitational force is also called what the weight of what of the object and the the force with with uh, the earth the moon and other massive body attract an object towards it is what is the uh, gravitational what first all right so we have electrical force is a force that uh, exists between what charged particles it either attracts together or what or they repair what together so that's electrical force you're going to have a full details of it when you get to what senior secondary so just relax so we have magnetic force it's a force that exists between what magnet just like electrical force that attracts and repel objects magnetic force also what attracts and what and repair what objects so just a, a brief summary of non contact force. We have gravitational force, is the attractive force that exists between objects. Okay, so electromagnetic force is the format, it uh, gives material uh, the strength and the ability to bend it or to squeeze it. So we have what nuclear force is whole particles in the nucleus together. So all these are what are types of non contact force. So in non contact force, we have what. We have gravitational force, which is the first one. We have electrical force, we have magnetic force, and now I've introduced what a nuclear force. So it's just a little introduction on them. So just try to have an idea. When someone says, okay, give me like three types of contact force and non-contact force, you're going to just say something, right? You're not just going to keep quiet. So uh, for contact force, you're going to say something like frictional force, you're going to say apply first, you're going to say normal first and try to explain it in your own way, the way you understand and with examples. So giving examples in all this is going to help you to know that yes, you really understood this. And for non-contact force, gravitational force, electrical force, magnetic force. Okay, so that's all about the, okay, we have quick first, so don't worry about all this. So let's go to what effects of what our first is how what can force do okay that's what we mean by effect of force so force causes objects to be set in what in motion okay whenever object is set in motion what is happening there what is taking place is what is force and force can change what the velocity of an object okay and force can also stop an object to what to move okay it can stop an object from moving just like what the frictional force do to what frictional force okay or air resistance and also force can also change the direction of what of an object and it can also change what the shape of an object whenever you compress or uh, compress something okay to the shape of the thing because you're already applying force towards it right when you compress it you're going to find out that what the shape will either stretch or what will compress so Force can cause state of motion, force can stop an object from moving, force can change the velocity of an object, it can change the direction of an object, and it can also what change the shape of an object. Alright, so so far we've achieved what our second objective. We've reviewed first and we've set the type of force and effect of forces. So let's uh, see or uh, solve problems on what on first. So the relationship between what mass, force, and acceleration is this. So follow my cursor. So we have here force is equals to what mass times what acceleration. So I abbreviate force to F, I abbreviate mass to M, and I abbreviate acceleration as what as A. So the first word is a new turn. Okay, that's the unit of force. I said it in our last class, and our mass M is in what is in kilogram. And our A is what acceleration, which is what in meter per second. So first is equal to what mass times what acceleration. So let's see problem number one. What force is needed to give a car a mass of what 600 kilogram and acceleration of 25, 2.5 meter per second. So remember we already have our formula 
first is equals to mass times acceleration and our mass here is what 600 so we just have 600 here multiplied by our acceleration 2.5 you are done so kilo either you put your unit as a newton or you put your unit as what kilogram meter per second what square okay so example two i hope this one is clear it's very simple so example two now what acceleration will result when a 12 newton resultant force applied to what to a three kilogram object so this time around we are not looking for force we are looking for what acceleration right so we have our force which is given to us as 12 newton and we have what our mass which is what three kilograms so we can find what our acceleration by what saying what the force divided by what by the mass okay so we have here yeah, we have our force to be 12 our mass is three and you can get your acceleration by saying what Force divided by mass, which is 12 divided by 3. And 12 divided by 3 gives us what? 4 meter per watt per second square, which is our acceleration. Is that clear? So example 3, we have what? A block of mass, 20 kilogram, is pulled along the ground by a force of what? Of 60 newton. Now, the force of 60 newton, right? That is what? The first force. Now, the frictional force is what? Is 10 newton. So calculate what the acceleration of the block. So you know it is here we have what two forces. And when we have two forces, we have to what look for what the resultant force. Okay? So the resultant force is what the first minus what minus the frictional force. So we have 60 minus 10, which will give us what a single force. It is like this is just like what we did the last class. This 15 newton is our net force. Remember our net force, remember when it is balanced, what we need to do. Remember when it is what on balance what we're going to do whether you add or we what we subtract Okay, so this is what is just taking place here Like I said in the last class the net force is also called what resultant what first so I believe now What you learned in the last class you are now applying it now. Okay, so Now we've gotten what a single force because net force whatever you do to net force you have to get what a single force So that single force that what we're going to use in our equation. All right, so now, since we are looking for what acceleration, you just want to divide. So our first now is what 50 newton. So this first is what it's about. It's our net force or the resultant what force. And our mass is what 20 kilogram. And our acceleration, we are looking for it. So we get our acceleration by saying what 50 newton divided by what 20. Okay. So we have what 2.5 meter per what per second square. So whenever you have two force in the question, always try to find what the resultant force, okay? So a block of mass 20 kilogram is pulled along the ground by a force of what? Of 60 Newton, okay? So the frictional force, the frictional force is opposing, okay? So the force is coming this way and the frictional force is opposing it. So of course, what do we do? We subtract, right? All right, so I hope this is clear. So let's see more examples. So yeah, we want to look for what is the acceleration of this modern car. So this is a very nice car and this car has a mass of what? Of 2 kilograms and it has a force. So this force, this car is moving this way of 18 newton and a frictional force of what? Of 10 newton. So try to pause this video and solve this problem. You're going to see the answer next, okay? So please and please try to do this now. So if you're getting the answer, a big thumbs up to you, okay? So please just try to affirm this to be sure that you have the same answer as mine. And it will give you more confidence that yes, you're really enjoying the class and you understood all what I've been saying, okay? All right, so let's solve this. So we have the first of this car. This car is moving towards the right. We have the first here, 18 Newton. And the frictional force is trying to work to oppose what the motion of this car the frictional force is what is 10 newton so of course we're going to what look for what our net force or resultant force okay so let's see our solution so our f1 is what 10 newton which is the frictional force and now our normal force which is moving the car is what is 18 newton so what we're going to do we're going to say what the first minus what the frictional force we have here 18 newton minus 10 newton so 8 newton is what is our net force and that's what we're going to what use in our equation so we have here first equals what mass times acceleration so remember in our question what is the acceleration of this what of the modern curve okay so 
we have 8 newton which is our net force now and our mass is what 2 kilogram and our acceleration we don't know so your acceleration is going to be what 8 newton divided by what by 2 kilogram so we have our acceleration to be what 4 meter per second square I hope this is clear and if you get 4 meter per second square give yourself a big clap okay let's see our last example for today's class so consider this diagram below now this is also another car very nice car it has a mass of what 800 kilogram okay and a force of what 1500 newton this force is moving to, this car is moving towards the right and there's a frictional force because the car is not moving on a smooth floor a frictional force of 500 newton which is what opposing the motion of this car so let's see what we are asked to do. So what is the resultant force of the car below? Uh -huh. So I believe you've done that. So try to do this immediately. And number two say, what is the car's acceleration? Of course, you you wait to what, you, from your net force that you will get, you can be able to what, find what the acceleration of what of the car. And if the total frictional force rises to what, 1,500 newton, what will happen to the car? Now, let me explain this this last question. Remember, this car is moving with what with a, a force of what one thousand five hundred newton. Now, if this frictional force is the same thing as the, what as the force of the car, if the frictional force is what one thousand five hundred newton. What will happen to the car? Meaning that the force of this car and the frictional force is the same. They are not moving. It's just like I explained it in the last class. You are pushing someone, someone is pushing you. You are just there. You are just static. So what do you think will happen to the car? So write it down. you see my answer in the next. Okay, the first one, resultant first. So like I said, is the first minus what the frictional first. So our resultant first or our net first is what? It's 1000 Newton. And what our acceleration is what? It's 1000 Newton divided by 800, which will give us what? 1.25 meter per second square so the question c says what will happen to the car if the frictional force rises to what 1500 which is the same force as the force of the car so the car will be moving at what at a constant velocity it's just like what i showed you in the last class where a ball is moving at a constant velocity there is no air resistance there is no frictional force it will just continue to move so if the force of the object is the same thing as the frictional force the, the object will continue to move at a constant velocity and there will be no what resultant force because if you want to look for resultant force here will be 1500 minus what 1500 is it it yes so the resultant force will be what zero so there will be no net force there will be no resultant force but this car will continue to be moving at what at a constant what velocity so i hope you enjoyed the class just a quick recap of what we've done in today's class we've uh we've reviewed first we find out that force is not just the push or pull upon an object it is also what interaction between what between this object and we went ahead towards to state the types of forces we have contact force and what are non-contact force not contact force can also be called force field or body force so a contact force is the force that is what in contact with what in uh, with an object or with the body an example of it is an applied force we have the frictional force we have air resistance we have normal force we have spring force we have tension force so just try to know at least four of them okay and also we have what non-contact force which is gravitational force that is pulling an object towards the edge imagine you throw your pain what causes your pain to fall down it is what gravitational force that gets attracted toward the sensor of, of the air that pull your pain down and we also have what electrical force we have magnetic force this force is what oppose or what they attract or repair what an object we went further to state what force can do which is the effect of force force can change the motion of an object force can stop the motion of an object force can change the velocity or direction of an object and force can what change the shape of what of an object
okay so after that we will solve a little problem on what and first and we found out that when when we have what a single force we just go straight to our formula which is first equals to what mass times acceleration the unit of force is a newton or kilogram meter per watt per second square and in some problems when we have our two types of force of course there will be our normal force which is our applied force and the frictional force so for you to get the actual force you're looking for it has to you have to look for what the net force or the resultant force and to get that it's going to be what the applied force minus what minus the frictional force and in a situation where this normal force and where this applied force and frictional force is the same that object will have no net force and it's moving at what at a constant velocity okay so try to follow me on google classroom this is the code on google classroom i must commend you you are doing well in your assignment but please i want to urge you don't submit your assignment like a chat okay so if you're submitting it like a chat everybody is seeing your assignment and it's there's a possibility that someone someone might go and copy your work so please if you submit your assignment like a chat like where you chat with me general comments uh, section I am not going to mark it so try as much as possible to submit your assignment privately to me so I'm the only one that you're going to see your assignment no one else is going to see your assignment okay so I hope you enjoyed the class try to go through this video two or three times for better understanding have a nice day and stay safe. Bye.